So you are a speedrunner or a moderator for a leaderboard and you are not entirely sure if the time that slice bit or any other timing program for that matter shows is accurate. Or perhaps the game is so optimized that the leaderboard requires milliseconds. For that, frame counting is essential. You could print out the video frame by frame to frame count it, but it's extremely bad for the environment and is also very time consuming. Luckily, there's a program out there that can quickly frame count any video. Keep in mind that I want to cover as much as I can in this video because I want to make sure that it's accessible for the beginners of beginners. That's why you can find the table of contents in the video description so you can skip to the parts that are relevant for you. So let's get started. <laughs> so before we frame out the video, we have to download it first. The two most used platforms for uploading speedruns are YouTube and Twitch, so that is what we are going to cover first. I will cover this from the perspective of a leaderboard moderator and from the perspective of a speedrunner who wants to frame count his or her video. After I explain that, we go to the program that frame counts video. So let's get started with downloading a YouTube video. There are a lot of websites out there that make it possible to download YouTube videos, but I do not fully trust them because they are full of weird ads and I always get a shady feeling from them. So we are going to do it differently. That is why I am going to use VLC Media Player to download any YouTube video. The reason for this is that VLC is a widely used video player already. So I assume that you already have this program installed. This way we can shorten the video a little bit. So yeah, before we go further, yes, I did change my sweater. I forgot that if I wear a green sweater with a green screen, we get a floating head. Not that smart. So the free tip for you guys is to... Uh, not forget to think about your wardrobe, what you're going to wear in a video, especially when you are going to use something like a green screen. <laughs> so when you are at the YouTube video that you want to frame counts, you can go to share and you can copy the URL. And when you click on that, you will see link copies to clipboards. So now we can open up VLC Media Player. We can go to the top left corner right here to media and click on open network stream. When we are going to paste this in the address bar, then we can click on play. And if you want, you can immediately pause it because otherwise the video will play. As you can see, it is playing if I want to, but that is not relevant and it doesn't matter for the end results. So when you have done that, we can go to the menu bar, click on tools, click on codec information or control J if you prefer shortcuts. And then we're going to completely um copy this url this whole location so i always do Control a Control c and then we're going to the browser once again and we're going to paste this ah! so automatically going to play as you can see but now we can just right click it save video as and we can save the video so here we can do a frame count video and we can save it and that is all you need to download the youtube video with vlc of course the download time will vary it depends on how long the video is how well your internet connection is but normally speaking this is a pretty quick way to download a video so to download twitch VODs, we are going to use a program called twitch leecher a link to the github page for this program is in the description so you can download it uh, alongside with me so on the github page Go to the version of your choice and download the Twitch Leecher EXE file. So just click here and it will uh, it will download. When it's done, you can execute the installation and open Twitch Leecher. After that, go to the Twitch file you want to download, click on share, click on video link and copy the URL. Now we can go to Twitch Leecher, click on search then press URLs and in this box we're going to paste the URL and click on search. Keep in mind that this program can take a little bit while before the, he has found the program. As you can see it will take a while for loading. Just be patient it will find it pretty quickly as you can see it just found it. Now in the lower right corner you can see a small yellow button that says download and then when you click on that you will go to this screen and you can change a lot of things like the quality and uh, which folder it will be downloaded and even the file name. Uh, and if the video is too long, you can even like crop the video if you want to. But, but hopefully the person already cropped it decent enough. So when everything is set to your liking, you can just press download. And keep in mind that downloading the Twitch VOD can take a while. 
And of course, just like the YouTube video, the longer the VOD is, the longer it will take. Congratulations, you've learned how to download Twitch VODs now by using the Twitch Leecher. Downloading your video via the Twitch Highlighter system is luckily the easiest of the three methods I will explain today. And it will be even easier when you use the Lights Plug plugin that I explained in the video right here. So after you highlight the UPB, you can go to Video Producer. And the video might still be processing, but this will usually take a minute or two. And when the video is processed, we can click on the three dots next to the watch button and click on download. So we can click on right here. And as you can see, it will, uh, you can click on download. It might take a while to download it because Twitch is just super slow when it comes to downloading videos. So keep that in mind. And of course, you can skip this step altogether if you have locally record your run to the hard drive or SSD, which I cannot recommend enough, by the way. So now that we know how to download YouTube and Twitch videos, we can download the frame counting program. So the software we are going to use to frame count is called the Vidimux. And Vidimux is a free and open source program which is originally made for easy video editing, but we are just going to use its A and B feature. But of course, before we can use it, we have to download and install it. So you can find a link to the VDMAX download page in the description, and then you can choose the installer that fits your operating system. As far as I know, Linux, Windows, and Mac OS are supported. Me personally, I use Windows, so I'm going to download the uh, Windows 64 version. by just clicking here. And as you can see, here is the 64-bit Windows installer. After downloading the .exe file, you can install the program. And installing the program is just like the others, very straightforward. So I assume you can install the program properly. So now that the Vidimax has been installed, we can finally start to frame count. Check the rules of the leaderboard that you want to frame count. Every respectable leaderboard knows that at least where the run starts and ends. This is important to know because it will not be accurate if you just wing it and that will kind of defeat the purpose of frame counting altogether. And you can always hit up a leaderboard moderator if the leaderboard rules do not state this clearly. By asking for clarity you avoid a lot of miscommunication and perhaps even disappointment so I definitely recommend that. So with our Vitamax open, we can select and drop the video that we want to frame count. For this example, I will pick an old run of me, speedrunning Die Hard on NES. Um, the run starts at the first black frame after hitting start and ends with when the text is readable on the good ending screen. So this is the timeline. We can press left and we can advance frame by frame to the... We can press left. It will go back frame by frame. You can go up to skip ahead. And we can press down to go back in multiple increments. You can also just drag this um, square or rectangle and just advance that way. So we're going to the first black frame. And there it is, that is the beginner screen. And when I press right, that is the first frame. I always like to double check, so I always go back and forth a few times, just to be 100% sure. When you found the starting point, you can press A right here. So by pressing the A symbol in the timeline, I just tell Avidamux that this is the first frame of the speedrun, basically. And now we're going to find the final frame of the run, which is kind of close to here. So I'm just going to advance this. And remember, this is on the first readable text, because this is not readable, at least not for me. <laughs> so... Um, we have to look at the first frame that's readable text, which is right here. The Holly is safe and alive, blah, blah, blah. And now we can press on the B symbol right here. By pressing B, of course, you say to Avidimus that this is the last frame of the run. Um, as you can see, I already moved the window a little bit more to the left because I was blocking the selection because that is basically the frame count. This is a uh, 1 minute, 56 seconds and 950 milliseconds. And that is basically all you have to do to frame count uh, a run. Congratulations, you learned how to frame count. Let me know if this tutorial was helpful by pressing the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. I'm also very curious what the first run will be that you're going to frame count. So let me know in the comments below. I would love to see it. You can also find me on these socials right here if you want to connect or have any more questions. Once again, thank you so much for watching and speed on.